Welcome back everyone, it's time to go balls deep into Attack on Titan! <laughs> Attack on Titan Season 4 Episode 8 finally done it! All it was manga readers knew this would be happening soon and damn, when it did happen, it just hit hard! <laughs> Okay, for reals though, gotta say the surprise factor wasn't really there as, you know, being a manga reader, that's expected, but this moment left a massive dent in the community and in my heart. So please guys, show your respect by putting F in the comment section below for our one and only potato girl Sasha. The death of Sasha was probably one of the biggest loss we've seen for our gang in Attack on Titan, obviously apart from Urban, but Sasha was such an iconic character, like she was even a meme, and I would go as far to say she's probably one of the only comedic relief in this whole madness, but then again, that's the thing, her death symbolizes the transition to the seriousness of what's about to come. Die, potato. But before I delve deeper into that, let's get straight into this episode breakdown. Okay, so we start this episode with the fight we have all been longing for. Eren was Rhino round 2. Rhino starts fighting, staring at Eren, exclaiming how he wanted to just bite the dust. You know, my man's supposed to call it a day and go to sleep. Well, good. This is the kind of callback to what Eren said about him, about Rhino being similar. Eren had felt the same way about his life, where he wanted to give up when he asked his story to take his titan power and eat him in season 3. They both lunge at each other for a punch, just like they did in the round 1 of their fight. However, this time instead of both smashing each other's heads in, only Eren lands a hit on Reiner. Reiner gets slammed to the ground. Everyone is shocked at how easily Eren was able to disarm Reiner. As the last time, it wasn't so easy to take care of the armored titan. But then we find out that Reiner didn't just give up. Rather, his objective wasn't to punch Eren, but rather to get the jewel titan off Eren's hand and save his comrade Porco. This pretty much pisses Eren off and he's about to finish Reiner, but then Mikasa stops him telling him that they can't kill him right now as Eren has no strength left. We then see them retreat back to the airship. However, within all of this madness, Gabby decides she wants to go to the airship and kill them. Because, you know, she's not just an ordinary kid. She's a kid with a bloody rifle. But her best buddy, Falco, also decides to follow her. Now, when Eren is hopping into the airship, he is led inside by Armin. Now, Armin still looks pretty out of it because we know what he did just a few minutes ago. Yeah, he just destroyed an entire Marlin fleet with millions of casualty. Something like that can change a person and most likely had an effect on Armin. Levi then shows Goes up and asks Eren if he fell into a vat of shit. Levi then proceeds to kick Eren's face in because of his reckless actions and after referring to a season 1 throwback he detains him for his rogue misconduct. Eren acting as though it's not a big deal lets them know that he did send them letters detailing what was going on in Mali so they should be able to understand right? But Levi just calls him filthy as he continues to put him down and annoyingly tells the captured Zeke and Eren that everything is exactly as they thought it would be. We then move to Jean's group who leads the Eldian forces to take out some Marlians protecting their airship. After noticing that none of them have any strong weapons, Jean tells them to get on board the ship, but a group stays behind just in case. Jean, Connie and Sasha are all reunited on the airship and talks about their losses while Flock and the other scouts have a huge celebration over their victory. We come down to the ground where Falco is chasing after Gabby, telling her to stop. Yamate Gabby, Yamate! But nah man, this girl's on a mission. He finally managed to get a hold of her and pulls her around to see Gabby is crying. He asks her again to stop. And there is no point in trying since the Aldeans are leaving. But then Gabby explains her trauma, how Zofia's body was crushed when she was in the middle of talking right next to her, and Udo was trampled by people while he was trying to save Zofia. Not only that, but the gate guards were killed by Sasha. We then probably get one of the only explanations to Gabby being a little shit throughout the series. She explains to Falco that because she was born an Aldean, people would treat her differently and look down on her. That's why she worked so hard to prove that the Aldeans were good people too. But now, every bit of hope she had is gone along with the internment zone. She then tells Falco that he can say whatever he wants but she will never forgive anyone that tramples over her home. I think it's worth noting that Gabby's experience is kind of similar to Eren's when he went through the fall of Shingon China. In fact, she is almost like a Marlin version of him which is interesting because Isayama has noted she was created to look like a female version of him too. However, as I said in last week's video, Gabby is not Eren's counterpart. Gabby from the get-go to find her own freedom, she trampled over others by submitting to the Marlin oppressor 
masses, she became the pawn and helped oppress other nations. She also participated in wars as a Malian warrior so she can find glory and then find a better life for herself. In Eren's case, he was always fighting the oppressors which at first was believed to be the Titans, then it was the Malians and now it's the world itself and the false ideology of harboring hatred. But coming back to Gabby, tells Falco, how dare you tell me not to run and that Falco can't do anything because he doesn't know why this happened. Which isn't true since Falco was there while Eren was explaining his plans to Reiner. After hearing Eren's side to the story and having his level of emotional awareness, he tells Gabby the reason this happened was because of the Eldian people were also devastated when they lost their people too because of the Marlins attack and that this was their revenge. Gabby stupidly asks as if he saw it himself to which he replies he didn't. Gabby says neither did she. So she hypocritically goes on to say that killing them is normal and it always has been. They are the devils after all. Although it's clear that the conversation that Eren had with Reiner and the words of them being the same have stuck in Falco's mind. Gabby then heads off to where the Eldins are where she encounters one of them in his ODM gear. Gabby then quickly reveals her no scoping skills and shoots him off the air. After she does that she notices that the wire is still connected to the airship. She then tells Falco that she's going up there to kill him all. Falco who still cares about her tells her that she's going on a suicide mission. She being the little shit she is she don't give a damn so she asks Falco to tell her family that she fought to the very end and she hopes they'll carry on her spirit forwards. But at this point Falco's brother Colt comes out of nowhere and tries to stop them. Gabby with Terry eyes bid them goodbye telling him that he was a good guy. Falco gets some flashbacks and then he grabs onto Gabby saying that they're both going to fly up together. My boys ride or die with this girl. But as Gabby and Falco shoots up to the blimp we finally reach the main event of this episode. As Jean tells everyone in the aircraft to be quiet expecting that low buff should be back by now he looks back to see Gabby rolling in into the aircraft with her rifle and BAM right at the heart Sasha drops dead. Yes guys she's gone. Now this instantly panic as Sasha lays motionless on the floor. Jean and Gabby fires back at each other as Falco comes in to tackle Gabby out of the way where both of them misses causing the bullets to ricochet. A horde of angry scouts come over to Gabby and Falco and starts to pummel them while Connie and Jean runs to Sasha's side. Sasha then tells them they're being too loud and asks if there's any food ready. This makes them even panic more telling them to cover her wounds as Sasha says her final words. Meat. Yes meat. Now that's pretty sad but it does define her character quite well. But with Potato Girl dead, Connie and Jean look so mentally broken. Throughout this all the captured Gabby has been screaming non-stop, going on and on about her hatred for the island devils and how she'll carry on Zeke's will. As she goes muttering on she tells Jean to tell this to their leader Eren. But Jean's like don't worry you little shit, I'll take you to him. Now this moment honestly highlighted the epitome of an endless cycle of hatred. This series started with the brainwashed ideology that the Eldian race of humanity in Paradise Island were evil. The people of Mali, even the Eldians in there, had this false understanding as a preset. This actually pushed a sense of insecurity and lack of self worth into these Eldian kids, and then subsequently forced Reiner, Annie, and Berthold to carry out the action they did in Paradise Island. In return, after learning this truth, Eren sought his revenge, or in many ways, a defense against a preemptive attack. Gabby, who witnessed this attack, watching her people die in front of her eyes, is now reinforced with all the negative connotation that was drilled into her throughout her upbringing. And maybe it's too much for Gabby to see her hypocrisy she lives by. She was willing to attack others freely, maybe as a possible protective measure for herself and her people, but wouldn't accept Falco's reasoning on why these Aldeans attacked them. Because of this, in her mind, she made herself out to be a victim and placed the people of Paradise as abusers. Okay, so we now move to Commander Magath who asks his peek on how she knew the soldiers who trapped her and Porco belonged to their army, to which he replies that the soldiers in question has been a person of great interest to her as she was a follower of Zeke. At this point it is revealed to us that Zeke is in fact alive and has been captured by the Paradisians. As Gabby and Falco look in shock on who had just entered the room, wondering how he survived and how they managed to capture him. After Jean updates everyone on what happens to Sasha and Lobo, Hunch then enters the room and asks Zeke if everything has gone according to his plans, revealing that he was actually the orchestra of this whole attack and capture plan. So why has Zeke the Beast Titan done this? Well it was all to create the illusion that the beast titan has been captured in order to unite the royal blood in Zeke with the founding titan in Eren all for the sake of Aldir's freedom and invoke his secret plan. But in order to do so, to prevent a full scale Marlian assault from taking place on Paradise Island, the top military leaders of Mali had to be killed and severe damage had to be done on the army to delay their attack. So with Armin destroying their ports and ships, extra time was bought. This episode then ends with the confirmation of Sasha's death. Everyone goes ballistic after hearing this 
Erin then out of all the question asks is what was her final words in which Connie says meet. This then makes Erin laugh as he reminisces the moments he had with Sasha. But then I guess Jon ain't really too happy with Erin laughing like that because he then responds to Erin that Sasha died because of him and how he got the survey corpse involved in all of this. Now from the first outlook you probably think that why is Erin laughing and, and why is he behaving in this manner? What's wrong with him? But I think this is quite a normal reaction because he's trying to reminisce the good that came with Sasha and how simple her thought process was. Obviously Erin is upset with Sasha's death but he's expressing it in his own way. Okay and that's it for this episode, I know it was pretty tragic, Sasha dropping like that will always be remembered. And it's kind of funny that this came out in episode 8, which 8 sounds like eat, like I ate something and she eats a lot, oh, okay maybe I'm just looking into it too much. But anyway guys, I'm really happy with this adaptation. It was amazing. But do let me know what you thought about this episode. And again, I don't think the CGI was pretty bad. I would give this episode at least a 9 out of 10. Let me know what your score is down below. And in the coming week, we break down the Attack on Titan intro. So make sure you tune in for that. Smash the like button, subscribe and ding the notification bell to be updated on our content. With that guys, I'll get you till next time.